Good to everyone, it's Conrad from ConradRocks.net and today I'm going to be playing a recording I did with the guitar player at Christ the Rock Church, his name's Rick. And the reason this testimony's on Conrad Rocks is during the baptism, um, he recently got baptized, a rededication. And he gave his testimony during the baptism, I'm like, you know what, I really need to, uh, people really need to hear this. And uh, anyway, so here's th- here's the uh, recording. Enjoy. Hey everybody, it's Conrad from ConradRocks.net, and I have a treat for you today. I have a testimony interview with Rick, the lead guitar player of Christ Rock Church. I watched him get baptized recently, and uh, you know, he had something pretty cool to say during the baptism. I thought, you know, I got to get that on my show, dude. How, how you doing, Rick? Uh, pretty good, Conrad. How are you? I'm all right. We grew up in the... It's kind of funny that we grew up in the same area, you know, basically, and never knew each other. That is true. We both grew up pro- probably 50 miles from each other. <laughs> oh, it's probably a little more than that. I grew up in Knox City, and I believe you grew up in Jayton. Yeah. Um, I, I, I imagine that back in the day, we probably played football against each other. Holy moly! Dude, I probably I probably tackled you or something. <laughs> you might have. <laughs> Although you probably would have had to go to the other sideline and tackle the, the water cooler to get me. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I know. I knew some of the people from Knox City, and, and it's really funny because, um, I don't know, Lampasas, I met Susan uh, online, and we're here in Lampasas, and it's like there's these three there's these three major highways here, and you got to go through Lampasas to get to heaven. I mean, there's... Lamp Pass is a pretty cool place. I don't. How'd you end up here? Uh, actually, it was through my job. I'd been working in the oil field uh, in yeah. Hamlin for about ten years. It, when, uh, well, I was pumping pumping wells there, and then uh, you know, after a while, that fell through, and I wound up working on a casing crew, Mike Bird casing crew, yeah. for about four years. And then uh, ran across somebody I knew that had changed jobs and went to work for a rock quarry uh, over in Looters. Yeah. And. Uh, and so uh, I tried it, and I worked there for just a few months, and they offered me a position here in Lampasas, which is funny thing is Lampasas is one of the two towns I always said I would never live in because of the, <clears throat> I don't know, how can I put it, the, uh, um, the police force is very, very pronounced in Lampasas. <laughs> Man, there's like 14 different types of police here. I, it's like, yeah, you know, you want to you wanna wear your seatbelt, and you want to go 35, not 36. You know, it's kind of right, crazy. you don't cross Key Avenue after midnight because you will get stopped. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but anyway, uh, basically it was my employment that brought me here, and I've been here mm-hmm. in Lampatch for about fifteen years. Amen. Now, here's what I wanted to get to. You know, one of the things when I was looking at those uh, those pictures, your wife took some really good photographs. You put them on Facebook after I did the movie, but she did some awesome photographs. And you know, one of the things I noticed is you and Adrian, you both had tattoos. Um, yes. I'm thinking, you know, God, God can transform people. Jesus, when you, you know, he transforms and you were talking a little bit about your testimony. Um, you said you were going to have nothing to do with land passes. It sounded like at one point in your life, you were going to have nothing to do with Jesus. Tell, tell me about, give us your testimony. Let us have it. Well, well, it depends on how far back you want to go. I was raised in a family that, uh, that never went to church. Um, matter of fact, uh, my mom used to tell me when I was little about Jesus, but uh, I never did go to church. Um, uh, actually, right before she died, she got to where she'd read her Bible every day, which I thank Jesus for that. But uh, I think when I was about 17, one of my schoolmates or classmates began telling me about Jesus and invited me to go to church. And uh, and so I went, and I wound up uh, getting saved and everything. Um, and I was really, really into it. And then I guess the enemy came in, and I noticed that it uh, seemed like everybody was there for the wrong reason. I got kind of disenchanted with life. And about that time, uh, my guitar playing and, and playing with you know rock and roll bands started really kicking in. And uh, and the lifestyle that kind of glorifies the rock and roll lifestyle, that's what eventually sucked me in, uh, the drugs, the alcohol, the women, the, uh, the basically big head that comes along with being... I was pretty well known in the area. I was... Uh, as far as my guitar playing, I'd been in some Battle of the Band contests and, uh, you know, Battle of the Band guitar player contests and stuff. And I, rem- I remember I was, them. I remember them. Yeah, back, 
uh, basically where you cut heads and stuff, and and I competed in Wichita Falls and Abilene, places like that. And so it was all pretty much about the music, but what happened is I started trying to live the life that the music was portraying, which uh, really wasn't a very good thing. Um, right. Basically, it was you know drugs, alcohol, uh, the satanic part of it. Uh, I was very much into the black metal. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very much into bands, you know, that uh, openly mock God, and so that's what happened to me. I mm-hmm. eventually got to where uh, I, I think I always tried to test God. I, I don't think it, there, there was ever a time I didn't actually believe, uh, but I knew that. Uh, I think I knew that it got so bad that I just didn't care if I went to hell or not. You know, it just. Right. Uh, I, I looked at Christians as a goody goody lot and, and as a blind lot. I looked at uh, at believers as, as almost with a, a sadness. Um, in other words, I just didn't really get it. Right. But what happened to me was I started getting further and further down that road. I started believing more and more um, of the uh, of the you know the satanic part of it. The the, the you know I'm untouchable. I'm immortal. Um, and then then I got married. <laughs> right. the first time and my kid was born and that mellowed me out some unfortunately what happened after that was uh, the the alcohol started really really getting bad Connor. I'd been arrested multiple times how old were you when you got married? 30, 32 okay so I was single all through I don't even really remember my 20s right. uh, very very little I can recall about it except there was a lot of drinking there was a lot of drugs there was a lot of jail um uh, some one of the tattoos I have, I don't even remember getting it. Um, oh. You know, it's like like one of those things, and it's not something that I'm I'm proud of. But basically, um, I had turned my back on the Lord. I, I knew who He was, and I backslid to the point I completely turned my back on Him. And uh, I read this book called uh, Neotech Zon Power. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. No. I didn't recommend anybody ever read it. You know, I mean, I read a lot of the occult books like the Necronomicon and stuff like that. But um, and I dabbled in a little bit of you know Eastern religion and stuff like that. But really, I wasn't I wasn't convinced too much of any religion. I was just kind of living day to day. One a friend of mine very poignantly put it to, that the only thing I cared about was where my next buzz was coming from, where my next woman was coming from, where my next beer was coming from. Right. That was pretty much pretty much what where I was, and uh, deep inside, I was really feeling bad about it. I mean, I was, you know, I remember waking up every morning with a horrible hangover thinking, is this what I've become? Is this what life's about? Right. You know, and then, uh, then me and my first wife, we, we uh, you know, it just didn't work. We got to where we were fighting every night. We both drank heavily. Um, we took care of our kids, but, but not like, you know, we never took them to the park and stuff like that. And it was just kind of a a time that they just seemed every day ran into the next. There was no happiness, there was no joy. But yeah. uh, I was determined I was going to live my own way. I was determined that nobody would tell me what to do. Nobody would even look at me wrong. I had a very, very bad attitude. Uh, got into several fights. I've got some assaults on my record. Um, basically, I just uh, was not a very nice person. Right. And, then, uh, and then me and my wife divorced, and I went through several relationships after that and none of them really worked out and all of them kind of cited the same thing you know that, that, that basically it was when I would drink I would turn into somebody else um, yeah. it had just completely gotten out of control and uh, and I was feeling sick inside I mean physically sick it was getting to the point where every time I'd pop the top I'd be like why am I doing this it's, it, it feels bad it's horrible and it's poisoning Right. And uh, then I, I met my wife, Chucky. Well, she wasn't my wife, of course, at the time. <laughs> and uh, and she, uh, <laughs> she was completely opposite of anybody I'd ever met. You know, she was church going. Uh, she had a little family already. Um, and very, very hard headed. And uh, I remember thinking, yeah, this is just going to be fun. And then, uh, you know, really wasn't that interested in, in, you know, a long term relationship at the time, but there was something special about her. Right. And uh, and immediately she almost made me believe that I could live without the drinking. And I was like, oh no, I can't. It's too far gone. It's you know, it's just too late. Um, 
And then she invited me to go to church. And uh, I was like, I'm not going to your church. I have no use for your church. I have seen your pastor. I don't even like the guy. He talks too much. You know? right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it funny. was just a bad deal. You know, was, yeah. I just uh, was pretty adamant that I didn't want to have nothing to do with it, especially since it was uh, what I called the Holy Holy Church, the Pentecostal. Right. And, and this went on for several weeks, months, perhaps, uh, while we were still dating. Uh, you know, she would invite me every Sunday and every Wednesday, and every Sunday and every Wednesday, I'd be like, no, I ain't going. You just forget about it. And then finally one day I gave in. I said, you know, I will go just for you. I ain't going to like it. I'm just going to sit there and listen. But, you know, as soon as I, I, I came in that church and looked around, I could tell something was different. And I had been to several different churches, but... Um, when I heard Pastor VZ bring the word, it, it just a light came on. I said, "Finally, here's somebody that gets it." You know, this is it. Would just it just all changed immediately as soon as he started preaching, and right. um, I, I I was changed that day. I mean, I had uh, backslidden so far that it was just you know I thought that there was no redemption. There was no way that Jesus could forgive me. Right. Uh, you know, I had mocked him to his face. I had completely disregarded the church I completely disregarded the son of God and uh, I mean and I'm, I've tried you know doing seances and stuff like that I mean you know some stuff you shouldn't do right and, but anyway that day in church something changed and uh, and I knew I was hooked I knew that, that Jesus would forgive me no matter how bad I'd gotten if I would just come to him again it's like he was saying you know you know Rick I, I know that I know what you've done but I still love you. I still love you. Amen. It's like that. It's like that prodigal son, I guess, huh? I, you know, Conrad, that's a real good way to put it. Uh, I guess I hadn't thought of it that way, but but um, it's just like a switch came on. I, I I knew that that he could still forgive me, and that he did forgive me. That he had died on the cross for me, and that and that no matter how bad I thought I thought I had gone, there was there was still room for me. Because I really saw myself as the lowest of the low. I may have walked around with a very prideful attitude, but deep down I felt like a slug. You know, you, you can't live apart from Christ and be truly happy. I found that out. Amen. Um, you know, you, you may have all the money in the world. You may have all the good looks. You may have, you know, the women and the fast cars or whatever. None of it is going to make up for that empty feeling that so many people have in this world the stuff that the material things can't bring you. And that's that's the relationship with our Lord. And that day that I went to church, it, it changed everything. And I haven't stopped going ever since. And I decided to rededicate myself and get baptized. And um, and like I said, you know, I'm, I didn't even tell anybody I could play the guitar in the church for a long time uh, because I was just uh, wanting to kind of see how the part of me wanted to, but part of me was like, I don't know. Right. And they actually came and offered me, you know, to try out, and and they were like, "Yeah, we we would like for you to play with us." And that that's another thing that I love about this church is I've never been to a church where I felt so much like I belong. Right. But uh, this this body of Christ is very special. I mean, all bodies of Christ is special. And you know, I feel for I feel for the Christians who are being persecuted in Iran right now in Iraq, and uh, I pray for them. But we we've, we've got to start at home. You know, charity starts at home. We've got to build up. We've got to build up the body at home. But uh, you know, I just look forward to to growing in the spirit. I look forward to growing in Jesus, mm-hmm. and I I look forward to daily emptying myself of myself. And it's it, it's a it's a long process. I didn't instantly become an angel. It's a it's a it's an ongoing process. You know, I. I I've heard so many people talk about, you know, there's a bolt of lightning and and all this. And I would just like to say to anybody who who doesn't have that immediately transformation feel that it's still there. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Yeah. Um, basically, what I do is I kind of keep a record of everything that's happened in my walk with, with God recently. And I can look back on it, and it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing the things that he's done for me. Um, he's done everything from relationship wise to financial wise to just you know, and he never works in a way that that he always surprises you. You know, you you think oh maybe God will come through this way or that way, but he always comes through in a way that I didn't expect, and it's always better. Um, 
so I just want to say that I'm so happy to have a God that, that forgives. I'm so happy to have a God that didn't spare even his only son. He didn't even spare his son for me. Even yet, while I was walking around with the dregs of the earth, even yet, while I was thumbing my nose at, at the sky, and uh, and even so, he still loved me. And uh, and basically, that's that's where I'm at right now. Amen. I uh, I gotta tell I, you, I gotta tell you something, man. You and I have a very similar testimony. <laughs> I mean, really, really, dude. And, and you know, one of the things that, that I noticed in, in, um, by sitting in Bible study with you and you and I would talk or whatever, you would ask questions that were way beyond milk. And, and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out something. You studied the Necronomicon, the, 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 the occultic books, because you, you, even in your backslidden state, knew that there was something out there, right? You were searching, and you, you asked really good questions. I'm like, that's not a... The, the questions Rick asks are not like milk questions. Susan even says it, too. He goes, man, he asked some really insightful questions. Even in your backslidden state, you were searching for something, weren't you? Yes, but that's just the nature of who we are. I mean, we constantly... I, I used to say I had an addictive personality because I just want more and more, and, and knowledge is part of it. Now, I've never been very book smart. I barely right. graduated high school. But uh, you're absolutely right. I um, I was searching for something, something bigger than myself. And whether it bet, um, you know, on, on the holier end or the unholy end, uh, but even, you know, like I said, you know, um, some of the, the Eastern yoga type stuff, yeah. Or um, or the Hawaiian uh, Huna religion, uh, you know stuff like that. Just uh, but you know, really, it's all it, it's all for not. I mean, every religion, I guess, has a little good in it. Right. And, but it makes sense to the world, but the world is blind to the ways of God. Amen. And, and we, you know, you know, we're to be in the world, but not of the world. And just because something sounds good, we're to test every spirit. And, uh, you know, it's one of the things that I'm really having to learn is, is not only patience, but how to die to myself. Um, but, you know, Jesus has come through for me so much here in the last few months, and he just, uh, I, I can feel the anointing sometimes, even while I'm up on, on the platform playing. You know, uh, sometimes when the spirit moves, I just get this, like a buzzy, funny feeling yep. going through me. And it's almost like I, I almost kind of drop out of my own thinking. But yep. it's just an amazing experience. That's called being in the but, spirit, man. Sometimes I'm in the spirit. I don't. I'm like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it just, uh, I am just so gra- grateful and thankful to have a God who forgives, and I'm so grateful that He didn't give up on me when I gave up on Him, because I would likely be dead. Um, a lot of my friends were dead, and you know, the funny thing is, the people we thought were our friends turned out to be not so much our friends after all. No. But um, that's that's just basically it. If you know if somebody asked me, you know, how Jesus made a difference in my life, I would say He is still making a difference. It's still changing every day. Uh, every day, it, and and thank goodness, you know. Sometimes, some like you know, today I prayed, you know, Lord, if I don't have enough money, let me find the fun in that. You know, it's kind of like the like uh, you know, well, how are we going to make ends meet? Well, let's just make a game of it because I know He's got it. Yeah, He does. It. He always <laughs> does, you know. So. It's not nothing to really worry about. Um, oh, you know, the principle of tithing, I was completely against it. I even had Christian friends that were trying to tell me, you know, that's, that's the Old Testament stuff, you know. But, um, you know, I tried it, and it works. It works. I encourage everybody to tithe because uh, you can't outgive God. You really can't. Yeah. There's a scripture in the Proverbs that says, those that give to the poor lend to the Lord. And, you know, we know... There's a spiritual economy, man. Even even if you do say tithing's Old Testament, the the principle's still true. I mean, you know, it works. Well, even Jesus, you know, he was he was getting after the Sadducees and Pharisees, mm-hmm. you know, saying, you know, you guys tithe down to the last spice, you know. He said, which you should do. He did say that. Mm-hmm. We're not exempt from that, even though we don't have, you know, the Levitical priesthood um, to support um I have found in my personal experience that it is, uh, it, it's it's an act of faith. It, you know, where your treasure is going to be, your heart will be also. Amen. 
And, uh, you know, it's sometimes, you know, you're like, well, this is a test. Do I believe? Because this is the money I really need. But uh, I, uh, I I do believe very much in, in the tithing now. And that's just a small portion of the things that God is showing me. I mean, just a small portion. Um, you know, I used to, I didn't love anyone. I didn't even love myself. Right. And uh, I, I used to I think that I was maybe something wrong with me. Um, you know, I had a not so great childhood. I was beat real bad. I was abused. And, uh, you know, it was just one of the kind of deals where I just was mad at the world. Right. But, uh, uh, you know, all of us, you know, you, me, Adrian, you know, we we all come from just a little bit, but not too much different because, you know, basically we had followed our own desires and it took us down a road that nearly led to death or prison. And like the prodigal son who was, you know, wanted to come back and work as a, as a hired, a hired, you know, a hand, you know, because he was sleeping with the pigs and eating their slop and stuff, you know, that's kind of where I was at. Right. And, uh, and instead of being angry, um, I, I, I sometimes wonder if God wasn't kind of cautious with me, though. He's he's sort of like, you know, he says, you know, I could hit you with the whole enchilada right now, but I'm going <laughs> to give you a little bit. I'm going to give you a little bit at a time this time since you walked away from me. But uh, but deep down, I knew that he still had my back, that he that he uh, that he died for my sins, and that he forgives. Amen. He and, does. And I I uh, I just. I just praise I just praise the Lord I really do because uh, you know every day is, there's some days that are harder than others but with Jesus there's no such thing as impossible anymore. Our God is the God of the impossible. Yeah, with God all God, things are possible. He's the God of the dark times. He's the God in the light times. He's he's uh, he is a uh, he's just amazing and and I just uh, I just can't say how how much enough that I love him and. I give thanks that He's forgiven me, and Amen. that I'm I'm eager to to do His work. As I, I listen for His voice, and sometimes I do get messages from Him. I I, um, I know some of you all are are a little farther advanced, like in the prophetic and stuff. And I haven't really found my spiritual gifts per se like that too much, other than than uh, sometimes I do seem like I I know what He wants. It's way down deep. Yep. Yeah, my my sheep know my voice, John chapter 10. I mean, he has a relationship with us. And, you know, when, when John chapter 10, he's talking about sheep and the shepherd. Well, the the sheep may not understand what the shepherd's saying, but they at least know who's talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and if we don't know his voice, then we were never his. Right. And uh, it, it's funny, I, I, uh, at one time I just I just knew that it was all off God. I just knew that 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 I had done so much to try to hurt God, uh, you know, through my cultic practices and my over-the-top satanic music and and just the lifestyle I was living. I mean, it's just, uh, it's pretty shameful. There's nothing to brag about. Mm-hmm. And I, I really should have been dead many, many times of overdose. And uh, I just got to the point where I thought for some reason that I was immortal. And I... I would run across Christians every now and then who would look me right in the eye and they would say, you know what, I can tell Jesus has a plan for you. And I'd look at them like, what are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, you know, whatever his plan be, may his will be done. Uh, I just, I just thank, I just thank God that I'm still alive and that he's given me a second chance. And that uh, anybody who has ears listen because it's real and it's coming down. Jesus, Jesus is the real deal. Jesus is real. Thanks, Rick, for taking this time out to share your testimony with us. Hey, if you guys want to see Rick, he plays guitar pretty much every... I don't think you've missed a Sunday since I've known you, dude, over at Christ the Rock Church. You play every Sunday, don't you? Pretty much. I, I, one time I couldn't play because I had hurt my back, I think, and there was, I think, another time I said, I think in close to two years I've only missed two to two Sundays. Amen. All right, well, thanks for giving your testimony, dude. We we love you, and I'm, I'm going to see you Sunday at church. Well, I look forward to it, Connor. Thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to share, and God bless everybody. God bless you. Well, that was Rick, the guitar player from Christ the Rock Church. Uh, what a wonderful testimony. We had a lot in common, i got to tell you. And it's really interesting that we grew up together, too. Amazing. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for being in my life. 
Keep those testimonies coming. You can send them to Conrad at conradrocks.net. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher.